Hello everybody! As we are currently improving the services that we have in the institution, we hereby introduce to you to the CLD or Criteria Lead Discharge Form Protocol. This is a structured approach in improving the patient journey and address any obstacles and sharing the patient treatment plan with all the concerned parties such the nursing team, case managers, discharge team, and others. The MRP is requested to write down the major steps in the management plan within 24 hours during the patient admission. The discharge criteria will be clarified and validated by the consultant in charge prior to the commencement of the CLD plan. Meanwhile, the nursing team will work together with the MRP to follow up on the progress. The form has three main parts, which are Part A, Medical Review, Part B, Criteria of Clinical Discharge, and Part C, Patient Met. In the upper left corner, the patient identification should be indicated, signifying the patient's name and medical record number. Meanwhile, in the upper right corner, the criteria led discharge or CLD column is seen. The consultant's name, his or her specialty, patient's unit, and bed number should be filled out. The first fragment in Part A is the medical review which should be completed by the consultant. You can see the patient's admitting diagnosis, patient comorbidities, and estimated date of discharge. These are all necessary for the treatment plan of the patient so they should be correctly filled out. Note that the estimated date of discharge is significant to smoothly approach the patient discharge process and it mainly highlights the goal of the CLD approach. Following the consultant's corner in Part A are the four essentials to consider in patient treatment plan. These are essential consultation, procedure needed, major investigations, and supplies needed. To clearly understand how these things fill out, the essential consultation person is to indicate what specialty the patient is referred to. This can be endocrine, cardiology, medical, physiotherapy, or others. Meanwhile, the procedure needed is vital to see if the patient will undergo minor or major surgeries. An example of this, if the patient is for a procedure, is I am male right femur. If the patient is not for a procedure, leave it blank. The major investigations for laboratories, radiology procedures, and others should be added too. Kindly be reminded that include only the major investigations which are significant to the treatment plan. For example, a a male patient with an admitting diagnosis of fractured right femur who has referred to cardiology or medical team might have a major radiology investigation of x-ray to the right hip and spiral CT to rule out PE. So in this case, the MRP will write the x-ray to the right hip and spiral CT to rule out the PE in the major investigation area. Lastly, in the supplies needed portion, for instance, for a patient with a fractured right femur, the MRP can request or order crutches. Please keep in mind that the first column for the four portions will be filled out by the MRP while the columns for the date and time when it was requested and done as well as the notes columns should be filled out by the nursing in charge to the patient. Part B of the form is the criteria of clinical discharge that is to be filled out or completed by the MRP. There are three columns in this area, clinical discharge criterion or criteria, comments, sick when met, and each of them is vital in the treatment process. In in this area, we can see the progress of the management in the patient care. The MRP should include all necessary indicators that the patient will have during his or her discharge in the clinical discharge criterion column, like patient surgery is completed, wound status is dry and clean, drainage level is less than 50 cc, physiotherapy, and others. The MRP should remark the status of the clinical discharge criteria in the comment section and emphasize if the criteria are met or not met in the third column. In addition, the name of the responsible person should be written at the bottom of part B. Please note that after the MRP writes all the criteria for discharge, the primary treating team should follow the criteria provided. In Part C of the form targets a successful treatment plan using the CLD approach. The targets are patient is clinically and physically fit, all discharge criteria are met, physical discharge is done. If the targets were achieved, the MRP should tick Y for yes and N for no if they are not achieved. 
he or she should write his or her name in the column with an affixed signature. Once all the criteria are written and finalized, the patient is ready for discharge. However, if the patient is not yet for discharge based on the estimated date of discharge, the MRP should write the reason why the patient is not yet for discharge in the space provided after the recent patient not discharged by using CLD protocol. The OPD follow-up is written from the day of the admission and it should be written using this format Sunday, July 28, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. Please indicate if the patient will be having sick leaves by marking yes or no and write the days if there are sick leaves provided to the patient. Lastly, granted that there are delays in the treatment or management, the MRP should emphasize it in the space provided and he or she needs to highlight the reason for delays. So that's it. So I guess that's all for this video. See you again. Bye!